Hey everyone, welcome to Mission Impact Series with Tracy and Ty. Um, so we're back. We've been kind of on the hiatus for a little bit, but we're back. Life gets busy, business gets busy, and we just have to take care of that, and then we can get back to this business, right? Uh, so today we have our topic is going to be complicated times with simple solutions. You know that kiss, keep it simple. We're not going to say stupid, but keep it simple. <laughs> Keep it simple, simple, right? <laughs> um, so we want to be able to keep the solution simple. So yeah, we could rename it. Keep it simple. Keep it simple solutions. I like that. We can do that. Keep okay. it simple solutions. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about a few topics um, in the series. We're going to talk about legal issues. We're going to be talking about board business. We're going to be talking about training and experience and strategies at play. So that's going to be the four-part series for complicated times with simple solutions. Because I find, and I know what Ty as well, that people tend to overthink the solutions to the problems and they make it more complicated than ever. So we're going to talk about some of those things. So this is your first time catching us. My name is Tracy V. Allen. I'm the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where I help social um, impact businesses to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyle that they desire while impacting their communities. All right. And I am Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And Tracy, I, sometimes I add the little piece without the traditional headache and hassle. And you know what? This topic is just that because sometimes the hassle comes because people are not trying to keep it simple. Yes, and exactly. Overthinking, overdoing almost everything. Right? right. So I would think that the um, for this one, we're talking about legal issues. That's the first thing we're going to be talking about, legal issues. And when we talk about legal issues, we're not talking about like cases that have happened. We're talking about the legalities of the organization, whether you're a social entrepreneur, a social enterprise, a nonprofit organization, or just a regular for-profit business, legal issues is where we get caught up, right? Because we don't have legal knowledge and hiring a lawyer becomes very expensive, but having a consultant does not replace a lawyer, but can help you to overcome some of the pitfalls that you tend to find yourself in on a regular basis. Right. So just simple things, especially for nonprofits, knowing your bylaws and having some, you cannot believe the amount of nonprofits I've met that have absolutely no bylaws. And if they did, it was something that they copied and pasted and they don't know what's in the bylaws. Because when you say um, someone will ask you, can I do X, Y, Z? And you're like, maybe check your bylaws. And they're like, what? <laughs> you know, so then you're left with, what do you mean? What? Like, you have mm -hmm. bylaws. It should state in your bylaws whether or not you can, you know, just terminate a, a, a board member or if you can, um, how many board members you can have or just simple things like that. Just knowing the legalities of your business, whatever business you're in, becomes imperative to your success. Mm -hmm. And you know, Speaking of bylaws, sometimes it gets just really wild, right? I've had mm -hmm. organizations who have been formed for years and do not have bylaws. Mm -hmm. What are you? How are you operating this organization without bylaws? You know, one part of it, we're talking about legalities and paperwork. And one of the questions that you're asked in your your 1023 application, if you're doing the short form, which um, we're not going to talk about that today, but if you're doing the short, it it doesn't. You don't have to submit your bylaws with your application, but it asks you if you have these documents. Yeah. Right? And what I'm saying is that a lot of people are telling out here telling lies, Tracy, they out here lying. And yeah. They, and they say, yeah, I got them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got them. So I can get this approval and we're pushed through or whatever. And then when it's time to get to work, nobody knows anything. How long should my board be serving? How can I fire? How can the board uh, be terminated and all these things? And there's other they have things, no governance. No governance, right? And then they're <laughs> making up stuff. Yeah. You know, like Tracy said, a consultant doesn't replace a lawyer. You know, mm -hmm. if you need that legal support, but having a consultant or a lawyer or somebody that can really look at your bylaws is beneficial because sometimes y'all make stuff up that's not legal. Yeah. You know, put them in the bylaws because mm -hmm. you heard that, hey, if the bylaws said it, then maybe I, I can make this work. But some of the stuff you're putting in there, if it's contrary to what your state uh, requires that you do, 
it's not going to hold up even if it's in the bylaws right right you want to make sure that whatever language you're putting in there is something that is actually what your state is requiring that you have and not mm-hmm. stuff make up because you want to have you, you know nonprofits, for example are not to be established for personal gain and i've seen people junk up by laws with with all this you know conversation about how they own it or what kind of you know all kind of foolishness that they'll put in their bylaws and think that it works because they put it in the bylaws right yeah or saying that they cannot be terminated from the nonprofit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And then when you go to for profit or social enterprises, you have to take into account that you need SOPs. Right. Mm -hmm. You need standard operating procedures and you need to have an operating agreement with even if you're a single member LLC, you should have an operating agreement with yourself that you keep in a corporate binder. And I'm tired of talking about this corporate binder. Let me just pull down a corporate binder. (laughs) Give me one minute. I won't take myself off. And, and she's off screen. I'm going to talk about the corporate binder. Y'all know there's some banks that won't even allow you to, in a for-profit business, won't even allow you to open a bank account unless you have the standard operating procedures. Do you know that, Tracy? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I was telling someone that the other day and they were arguing with me and I said, no, you need it. So this is what a corporate binder looks like, right? You can buy it off Amazon, right? Mm-hmm. Or you can just buy a folder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so all this is a three-way binder. <laughs> Yep. Oh, here we go. And then you have all of your stuff in here, your certificate of ownership that you wrote up to yourself because you need one of those. There are a lot of different things. I think maybe we need to just do um, one on the corporate binder again, because every time I do them, they go over very well. Like they get tons and tons of views and just kind of break down what's in here and show people how it looks and what's going on. But you need one. You need operating agreements with yourself because if something happens to you, what then happens to the business? That is, um, that is inside the operating agreement. You know, too many times we leave things up in the air when something happens to us because we don't know the standard procedures of how, what we should be doing. An operating agreement will secure your business in the event that something happens if you're a single member LLC or even a sole proprietor, right? What happens to the assets? What happens to the inventory? All of that can be put in there. And Ty is right. <clears throat> There's some banking institutions that will not open your account without it. When I lived in Connecticut, Connecticut does not um, specify that you have to have operating agreements. You don't have to in the state of Connecticut. But when I went to open a bank account, um, not with a local bank, with a, with a non-local bank, the bank was like, we need up. I said, why? You know, my state doesn't require it. And they were like, but we do, <laughs> you know? So I had to go get some operating agreements put together so I can open this bank account because they will not open my bank account without it. Because it's, so, it's getting serious. If people want to know, banks want to know that you are a legitimate business and you're operating legitimately. Well, the you truth is, on yeah. paper that yeah. says that you do this. Um, I had a uh, someone comes to me yesterday, they were they were going into a site visit and the funder wanted to see things like the employee handbook. You mm-hmm. know, they wanted to see uh, grievances, those policies that are related to, to those kind of things. They wanted to see those mm-hmm. on site, right? And they had 48 hours to get it together. <laughs> it's like, okay. Um, and things that we just kind of take for granted a lot of times because we're in it, we're doing the work and we're just going on, but we're not thinking about, you know, the things that we need to have, you know, on paper. Right. Especially so, once you start um, for yourself, for your own protection, right? And so that the corporate veil is never pierced. And when once you start bringing on subcontractors or contractors, and then you start hiring people, you definitely want to make sure you have those legalities in place. And that's what we talk about, complicated times with simple solutions. These are the simple solutions. If you have legal documents in place that outline how you operate your business step by step, you just refer back to those documents. It's a simple solution to whatever problems you have. When an employee or a contractor says X, Y, Z, you refer them back to the contract they signed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right? And that's that's even with your clients. Mm -hmm. Simple solutions. (laughs) Right? Yeah. So um, anything else you want to add, Ty? Just just do it right and i hate to say that i don't, I don't like to say just do it but <laughs> just do it yeah right and it has to be done you want to you want to show up and you you want to show up like you are like you mean business right yes. And, yes. and nothing 
shows that more than being prepared with your documents, you know, having things like your bylaws and your SOPs in order, um, and, and just showing up like you like you're there to compete. Even like at you that said, level. just showing up like you're really um, in business or you're in business to win. Mm -hmm. um, we can even just digress a little bit back to when COVID happened and the government was basically giving away all this money at that point in time. It just seemed like it was candy and they were giving it away for free, right? Um, but a lot of people still were not able to access those funds because they did not have their business set up like businesses. Mm -hmm. So just keep it simple by just getting all of the things in place. Get a checklist of the things that you need. And Ty and I promise we'll come back and do a corporate binder checklist because if you have a corporate binder, you basically have your business set up. You have all of the things that you need, right? I do have some things that are missing from my corporate binder right now, but it's on my computer because I also keep it on my computer. So mm -hmm. I have it in two different places, one in the physical form and one on my computer, but and you need to have copies in both places so you can pull it off the shelf if you need it. But yeah, just keep it simple by getting your legal stuff in place. That's it. That's it, y'all. All right. Bye, everyone.